Suppose you owned a store and you uh, wanted to find out how to satisfied your customers were with their experience uh, in your store. And in addition to that, you wanted to find out if there was a relationship between the uh, pricing that you uh, chose to use in your store and the overall satisfaction. Well, that's what this um, tutorial is based on. We're going to look and see if there's a relationship between those two variables or if there's a correlation between price and overall satisfaction. And we're going to do this using Excel and the data analysis tool pack in Excel. So you're looking at a Excel spreadsheet which in, uh, includes the, all the data from a satisfaction survey that was taken a while back. And uh, across the top you'll notice all of the, the, the row represents all of these survey items. For example, each person was asked their gender, their age, and so on, all the way down to the last few items with, that had to do with satisfaction, satisfaction with the organization, satisfaction with their service, the quality, the price, and the overall satisfaction. So that's what the top columns represent. The rows represent each individual and his or her responses to all of these survey items. So we're going to see if there's a relationship between these two variables, price and overall satisfaction. In doing this, there's a couple of things we're going to be looking at, and one is called the Pearson's R correlation, or the coefficient. And this will be a, a value between positive 1 and negative 1. And the closer to 1 that the value is, either to a positive 1 or a negative 1, the larger the actual effect, or the larger the uh, relationship is. And you'll notice this line right down here. Um, in statistics, it's generally accepted that the following scale can be used to estimate effect size. So if you have a Pearson's R correlation uh, right around a 0.5, a positive 0.5 or a uh, negative 0.5, it would be considered a large effect. And a 0.3 would be a medium effect, and a 0.1 would be a small effect. This is just to give you some bearing on which to judge your finding and say this is really a large effect or, or not when we get to that point. Uh, in addition to learning how to do the Excel analysis, we're going to see what it would look like to write these findings up in a, a report. And finally, uh, because we're using Excel, we can't run a statistic uh, a significance value for this correlation. Uh, this would be typically done when you're reporting on a correlation, but in this case we can't. So that means our finding will be um, uh, related only to those who took our survey. If we were able to run a significance analysis and, it, and we found out that our finding was significant, we could then generalize our finding and say, well, this finding was true of this group who took our survey, but it's also true of the population from which uh, we took uh, our sample. So you could say, in this case, it would be true of all the customers of this store if it was a significant finding. So it's a valuable analysis, but we can't do that right now in Excel. As we begin our uh, analysis using Excel, uh, you'll need to make sure that you have the data analysis tool pack installed. Excel comes with this, but it's not installed. So if you haven't already installed it, you'll need to go up to this little ball right up here and uh, get to uh, Excel options. Go down there and click that. And then you want to click the add-ins tab on the side. And down at the bottom, manage Excel add-ins. Click go. And then the list there, you want to select the Analysis Tool Pack, click OK. And then once you do that, along the top ribbon of your Excel sheet, you'll select the Data tab and you'll find the Data Analysis icon to be over on the far right hand side. In organizing your data using Excel, it's important that the two variables that you want to analyze to see whether there's a correlation, they need to be uh, next to each other. So in this case, we want to know if satisfaction with price is related to overall satisfaction. So we needed to make sure that those two variables were next to each other. And in this case, they are. So now that we want to, we're ready to do the analysis, we get our Excel sheet opened up and we uh, select the data analysis option up here. You'll come up with a list of analyses that you can run. We will select correlation, click OK. And then a dialog box comes up and you want to uh, input the range of cells that you're going to analyze. And in this case, we want to analyze price. So select the cell that says price in the label. Hold down the shift key and select overall. 
Okay, and now still holding down the shift key, hold down the control key and hit the arrow down key. What this does is it selects all the cells that have data in them. And you'll notice that it inputs them in this input range. So now all of those cells are selected. You want to make sure that the button for columns in grouped by is selected and the checkbox is in labels in first row. In this case they are, so you want to make sure that that is checked. Then you're ready for your analysis. Select OK. And what happens is your analysis uh, generates a new tab in Excel. So you'll look down at the bottom. There's a new tab. Let me make this larger. There's a new tab and your analysis is up here. And it comes in the form of a table with the row at the top having your two variables, price and overall satisfaction and uh, down the side you see price and overall satisfaction. Then there's two important values in here and you'll notice that there's a one in terms in the box for price column and price row. That means they are perfectly correlated which makes sense. Uh, and in the uh, column for price and the row for overall satisfaction you'll notice there's a, a decimal value. In this case it's 0 0.585. This is the Pearson R correlation coefficient. So this is the statistic we would report in our findings. And in this case, there is a, uh, there is a correlation between price and overall satisfaction uh, of 0.58, or if we want to round it off, we'd say 0.59. When we go to write this up, here's what we would say. For those who responded to this survey, Higher price satisfaction scores were correlated with higher overall satisfaction scores, and we'd report the R equals 0.59, which can be considered a large effect, because you'll remember our effect size in general, 0.5 is large, 0.3 is medium, and 0.1 is small. Now you notice this was a positive number, 0.59. If this was a negative number, we would we would say for those who responded to this survey, higher price satisfaction scores were co correlated with lower overall satisfaction scores. So we would be saying that the higher the prices, the lower overall satisfaction. But in this case, it's not. Higher prices are correlated with overall satisfaction. Finally, since we have our data in an Excel spreadsheet, it would probably be important for you in your report to include all of the descriptive data for all of these satisfaction survey items and include a table such as the one you're looking at in the report. And this table includes the, the survey items. It includes the number of those who responded to each item, in this case 582. It includes the average score, satisfaction score, for each item based on this five-point scale that we've noted at the bottom of the table, and the standard deviation. I'm not going to explain this. It's just a, a typical value that you would report when reporting um, descriptive statistics. So to get your descriptive data, you want to go back to your Excel sheet and select the Data Analysis ta uh, tool, and then uh, you the box that opens up, you scroll down to Descriptive Statistics, select OK, and then clear out anything that happens to be in the input range to start with. Put your cursor there. And then we want to select all of the data that we want descriptive statistics for. Once again, these columns all have to be next to each other. So in this case, there are six satisfaction items, all the last six in this data set. So we put our cursor in the first column, in this case, number items, and we hold down the shift key, put it in the last column, and then hold down the control key and the shift key at the same time, hit the down arrow, all of the cells are selected and the input range is put in this little box right here. There are labels in the first row, so you select that box. You want summary statistics, just check that box, click OK. And once again, the analysis is opened up in a separate tab, so you automatically, and uh, here are your items right here. So first uh, satisfaction item, here's your descriptive statistic data and so on. And so from all of these values, we only wanted three, if you remember right. We wanted the number of folks who, who uh, responded to that survey item. We wanted the average score, which would be the mean. We have it right there. And then we wanted the what's called the standard deviation. That would be this number right here. So if you recall our table, we would uh, put the corresponding items 
in the cells of our table, the number or the count as it was called in the spreadsheet, the mean and the standard deviation, making sure that we put the scale at the bottom so that this mean column actually has meaning. So that's it. In this tutorial we examined how to produce descriptive statistics for a typical survey uh, findings and this table holds all of the data that would be uh, adequate to report um, survey findings. You have your survey items here, the six of them there, the number of people who responded to each item, the mean for each item, and the standard deviation. Always be sure to note the scale that was used for the survey at the bottom here. And remember these numbers, these descriptive statistics, came from our Excel table right here. And there's uh, your six survey items there and their relative uh, statistics here. All we used was the mean, the standard deviation, and the count. The rest of this information you're not going to need. And then to write up your correlation finding, this is a, an example of how you might write this up. For those who responded to this survey, higher price satisfaction scores were correlated with higher overall satisfaction scores. R equals 0.59, which can be considered a large effect. And this R was our correlation coefficient we found. If you remember back on this data sheet right here, the correlation between price and overall satisfaction was 0.58.